our chief guest dr yashwant kurmi sir i welcome dr yashwant kurmi sir here is a brief introduction about sir sir has a uh, done his uh, post doctorate usa sir has a 100 plus research uh, awarded and now sir uh, right now sir is a uh, working at mayo uh, clinic stated in mn uh, so i would request yashwant kurmi sir please start the session over to you sir uh, yes uh, i am uh, trying to share yeah. the screen yes uh, sir you have permission to share screen you can share now Uh, good morning everyone good morning. Uh, uh it's my pleasure to present a brief introduction on the occasion of ICA e PES 2022 uh, organized by the electrical and electronics engineering department by of SIRT Bhopal so now we move forward uh, i have some content that about the research work so uh, we see first the current research trends so this is uh, it depends on the field that we have uh, but because there are uh, in numerous fields are there so we are working on electronics and computers so that basically focused on that and Uh, recent technologies that we are moving towards the automation artificial intelligence or things so how it proceeds so next is how does this intersection of disparate technologies create enterprise opportunities here we see the examples so here their names are there combining the remote sensing and analytics technologies emerging environment applications how virtual world will revolutionize industries so the few examples we will see digital building life cycle the digital frontier of smart physical digital and social environments uh, the past present and future of 3d evolution programs so by seeing these examples we discuss so about current trend in current world the technology is at its pinnacle of the human evolution history the integration of different research fields or technologies at its deepest level of innovation is the demand of current era we discuss few examples here how does the interconnection of disparate technologies create enterprise opportunities what kind of processes determine which solution can best solve existing large scale challenges how so these are the questions few questions that we think about how have certain innovations created value in ways that were never and we can we are should someone begin their journey to determine what it can mean for them to leverage and utilize technology intersections that create region of interest roi and other quantifiable values the leaders of the field provide some of the insights and more from the context of someone who has designed developed and deployed advanced technology solutions for the world's most difficult and important problems so we can take ideas from that we can follow these people and get the ideas because people are at high uh, higher knowledge and higher profile and they are it 
higher position so we they are not having sufficient time but we have to follow them and we have to make efforts we have to do hard work on that for example just as gob facilitates coming together of geospatial technologies and the built environment draper combines diverse decline, disciplines to imagine and create new intelligent solutions that are building being utilized across the globe and far beyond uh, another example we can take combining remote sensing and analytics technologies emerging environment applications the past decade has seen an explosion in the availability of remotely sensed data it is not in only remote distance data it is everywhere but we are talking about this due to in part of technological advances that have reduced the size and increased the number of earth observation satellites parallel advances in machine learning and cloud computing have also enabled more correlations between insights from the data sets another example we can take how virtual world will revolutionize industries so initially whatever new things happens first it happens virtually so the omni was development platform at nvidia to learn how enterprises can fundamentally transform their business with the promise of vast interconnected virtual worlds often referred to as the metaverse so this be this these examples we can see uh, how nvidia's 3d design collaborations and digital twin simulation platforms is helping customers across industries build their future infrastructure achieve operational efficiencies and making the deep towards a digital future uh, digital building life cycle here rapid growth of urbanization global sustainability objectives generational changes in the workforce and digital transformation of individual companies are reshaping the industry business models recognizing and responding to the mega trends enabled to the most industry stakeholders proactively support shared goals and allow solution providers to build better products and services to meet their customer needs uh, these are some examples this is another example is past present and future of cd evolution programs how it changes the goal of cd evolution program dep is to complete acquisition of nationwide light detection ranging lidar to provide the first ever national baseline of consistent high resolution topographic evolution data from this we did uh, create data set as both the bearers dems and 3d point clouds the 3d national topography model includes developments in the next generation of 3d elevation programs and national hydrographic data sets including inland bathymetry that is underwater study hydrometry that are water other water bodies derived from lidar and connections to ground water and engineering hydrologic systems by seeing these examples i want to show that try to visit the good research labs nearby uh, in a group of scholars available nearby uh, it's a uh, in a bhopal now we go for and this one example about my research i have i want to discuss with you in which we can uh, discuss how we create the mri images and how we utilize the fourier transform to generate the mri images to so mri image signal acquisition and fourier transform for image generation here we take 
um, basic first we see basic at how Fourier series works. So Fourier series, it is a building block A sine omega x phi. This is the term through which we represent any periodic signal, any of the periodic signal by using this single term. Add enough of them to get any signal f of x you want. So any periodic signal we can represent by using this uh, this one building block. What does each term control in this where a, omega, and phi x, what each term controls, we can see this one. Which one encodes the coarse versus fine structure of signal? Here, take an example. This is a rect function. So we are taking and we are trying to construct this. So here we are showing only single pulse, but it is a periodic signal. So uh, f of x is reconstructed using multiple sinusoidal functions. So we are representing this f1, first, first frequency component, f2, f3, f2, f uh, infinite, or we say some limit that will be decided by the uh, Dirichlet conditions. So here we have one example, the similar rectangular function, and we have this DC component of this pulse and this first component, first frequency component. This we call F0 DC component and F1. Now we combine both of the DC and this F1, so F0 to F1 frequency component, we get this signal. We take another frequency component, F2, uh, more higher frequency component, then we combine this to F0 to F1, then we get this signal. Similar way, F3 component we add, so we get this signal. By combining multiple higher frequency components, we get this up to F5, we get the signal, so this approaching to the rectangular function. We add on more functions. In this way, we create signals. Now, moving on. Next, so here we have our signal. So this is a combination of two signals. So we are representing this. GT is representing on the left-hand side. Then we have this signal, its frequency is one. Then another signal, its frequency is three. Now we take its spectrum. So this signal gives the spectrum. Its frequency component is here with high magnitude and another component is with three frequency. Now we separate out the frequency and take the spectrum. So this is the spectrum for this. Now we take similar frequency and spectrum. Now we take- uh, Yes, one, sir, uh, 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 yes. Your, uh, your PPT is uh, stuck at, uh, try to visit the good research. Uh, are you uh, uh, scrolling PPT? Yes. Uh, okay, Please I am trying yeah, another yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, are you able to see? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, okay. So okay. Uh, uh, this is somehow we have moved. Okay. Uh, this we have completed. Now I am coming to our spectrum. So I go to back and to take that uh, for a transform completion and then I will represent it. Uh, sir, till 10th PPT, it was uh, okay. After 10, uh, there was no slide. Okay. So. I am trying to reshare, yeah. Okay, so here, now, now is it okay? It is okay, sir, now it is okay. Okay, so now I am moving for the previous position. Where we you, were... you can you can explain it from a starting sir. This was not visible. Okay, okay. So here we have a uh, uh, okay. So here MRI image signal acquisition and Fourier transform for image generation. So uh, this work uh, I I have done and I am currently also uh, expanding this work to so MRI signal acquisition and Fourier transform by using Fourier transform how we generate image. So first we see a simple Fourier series. So this is our building block. One building block consists A sine omega x plus five. Uh, so by using this term, we can uh, 
represent any of the periodic signal. So add enough of them to get any signal effects you want. Uh, what does each control? Here we have A, omega, X, and Y. So which term, um, what it controls? So we can see which one encodes the coarse and fine structure. So we see from here that now we are taking one example. It is a rectangular function. This f of x that function is written by uh, multiple sinusoidal components. So this we are representing f1, f2, f3, f2, fn, where n can be defined by the Dirichlet conditions. Now, uh, this is example I am showing here that rect function we take a DC component of this and first frequency component. We add both of the f uh, f naught and f one, so we get the signal. Similar way, we have F2 frequency component and the, we add F0 to F2. So we get this. Similar way, we add on F3, F4, and F5. By adding up to F5, so we get near to rect function. And we add on more frequency components, it will go to exactly rect function. So we stop here. Now we are looking here. This one is the GT function. It is a combination of two signals, two uh, single tone signals. Uh, so the single tone signals are this is sine 2 pi ft, this frequency is 1, its frequency is 3, magnitude uh, less for this three frequency component. Now we plot the spectrum of this. So it has two impulses at 1 and 3. Now this one is having it 1, <coughs> this one is having it 3. Sorry. Now we want to so that whole whole term is represented by whole rectangular function is represented by number of infinite terms. So we are writing here the sinusoidal term, and this is its spectrum. So this is the spectrum that we uh, find out by taking its. Now, fundamental physics and instrumentation used in MRI. So for the MRI, we have. First, we see why we are taking MRI. Can, it can provide detailed structure, functional, chemical, metabolic, and mechanical information of the tissue uh, of body. It provides excellent soft tissue contrast. It has many, uh, it also shows many mechanisms in the body. It is non-invasive. It is non-ionizing radiation, so it do not use non-ionizing. It do not use ionizing radiation. That's why we prefer MRI. Typical MRI images. So these are the examples that MRI images. So different MRI images are there uh, of head MRI. This is for angiographic MRI, and this we have some functional MRIs and some diffusion MRI, so different MRIs we take. And this is the spectrum of what is all the uh, be utilized in the, by using the MRI. Now, source of MRI, how we generate the MRI. So in uh, our body system, we have uh, protons that, we, that acts like a spin. So in classical physics, a rotating object uh, post, uh, possesses a property or known as angular momentum. So our body has hydrogen atoms, means water is most of the uh, part of the body so that contains hydrogen atoms and hydrogen protons. From that we can take, so this is the structure that biological tissues contains predominantly hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. And hydrogen is the most abundant atom in the body, about 60% of our body by weight. So this is by bit, two hydrogen and one oxygen it contains. Now, magnetic moment. So when we, this is the material properties, any of the material in the world all have the magnetic properties. So this is the, about the proton, the proton, hydrogen, proton, nuclei also have intrinsic magnetic property called magnetic momentum. The magnetic moment is proportional to the angular momentum by mu is equal to gamma i, where gamma is the gyromagnetic ratio. 
the net magnetization. So each uh, proton has its own magnetic field. Now net magnetic field works on this. So when for whole region, the net magnetization we are representing by M, capital M. So in the absence of external magnetic field, these are random. So random causes this M zero, it, this M becomes zero. So when we put this whole protons in a high magnetic field or external magnetic field, they get aligned and we, they give some ex, extra uh, one magnetic field that M we are showing here. This magnetic field in case of this proton, due to this proton, it is in the high magnetic field. When we put this proton in high magnetic field or magnetic magnetic field V0, it causes torque on it and twisting force acting perpendicular to both V0. This is the main field and proton also has its field. So that causes this precesses like this way. So this is called the precession of a gyroscope. So like this gyroscope, proton precesses uh, within the body. This we call precession of the proton. And the frequency of this precession is dependent on the frequency that is defined by normal frequency. This is dependent by omega equal to gamma B naught, where gamma is the gyromagnetic ratio and omega is the angular frequency, where B naught is the main magnetic field, where high, this is very high magnetic field. Now, RF pulse. After getting some magnetic field in a particular direction, we apply some RF pulse. So this RF pulse causes this magnetic field goes tilt towards normal and perpendicular to this field. So this is tilting and depends on the RF field strength of the RF field. So it tilts towards this one. Now perpendicular to this main magnetic field. Now this we call flip angle. So it depends on the power of this RF pulse. So this we call flip angle. So here we give a small power so it goes a small angle, if we give some uh, calculated power, so it gives 90 degrees, so this we call, and if we get more power, so it goes 180 degrees, so it depends on the field strength of the RF pulse. Now, this, uh, when this magnetic field, here I'm going back, this magnetic field returns back, returns back to its position, normal position, this field, so it releases the signal, whatever it gained, so that signal we detect. So when it comes back, and we detect that signal, that is called the MR signal. That MR signal, by detecting that MR signal, we generate the images. <laughs> so can we detect the longitudinal magnetization? That is, so now longitudinal magnetization we do not detect, we do the perpendicular magnetization, that is normal or transverse magnetization. <laughs> now, sources of MRI. So what are the MRI sources? So we see this one, and instrument stations. So sources of MRI, Hit, we have high magnetic field, radio frequency pulse, signal generator, and or we call RF coils and gradients. So these are the three fields that it requires. So main components are these, and these are other components. These. So these main fields, main magnetic field, RF pulses, and gradient field. These are the main components. So we see one by one that main magnetic field. So here, this is one round in this side, one round side magnet and one round side magnet this side. So these both magnets, it is shown here, one this side and one this side. When we combine the magnetic field of both the magnets, it is straight. This is the main magnetic field V0, V0. It is 1.5 Tesla, 3 Tesla, different. So this one is called 3 Tesla MRI, 1.5 Tesla MRI. It decides it's by the field strength. Stronger V0, stronger the uh, good, uh, magnetic field MRI images we can get. Now, RF pulses, RF uh, coils. So these coils here we have, these are the RF coils, these body coils, these all are RF coils that can, these coils can receive the MRI signal and it, if it needs, it's also transmit and receive both, it can do. Now, we have some other coils that we call gradient coils. So these gradient coils, these are these coils are used to vary the magnetic field inside this uh, whole body. So to vary this magnetic field, because if we generate the signal by using uniform magnetic field, so we do not get the information. So for the information, we use the gradient magnetic field. So these gradient magnetic fields generate a time, uh, varying magnetic field that causes each in every point there is a different magnetic field 
and we have different signal. So that gives us the information. So we have uh, along the G means longitudinal axis, or we say along the uh, length of the body. So this we call Z, G gradient or Z gradient. And this is the along the horizontal axis. So red one is creating along the horizontal axis. So this we call X gradient. And vertical L one is representing, uh, gives the vertical gradient. This we call Y gradient. So X, Y, and G, three gradients are there. So this is representing the gradient fields. By using the gradient fields, we encode the signal. So here we have this signal. We are giving this 90 degree pulse. So what happens? So it is showing here that how magnetic field varies. So initially how it was and then how it varies. So initially it was up, then it goes 90 degree. And after 180 degree pulse, it goes 180 degree shifted and then we get signal. So this is the signal. Initially we give 180, 90 degree pulse, so signal decreases. Then we give 180 degree pulse, so it uh, rotates in this plane and it aligns in a particular direction. So this causes we uh, signal are in the same phase and gives high signal sense. This signal we collect. And by using this signal, we generate the image. Now we proceed further. So now we need to encode the signal because if this magnetic field is uniform, now we will need to encode. So if we apply the gradient. This gradient is at one point it is plus and it another point it is negative. So here it is minimum, here it is maximum. And the center, the, due to the gradient, it is zero, only man magnetic field exists. So this causes, the as the magnetic field changes, signal strength changes, and that causes signal frequency changes. Here frequency is minimum, and, it, and that the magnetic field changes, and this frequency changes. That causes, we have, we have, uh, varying magnetic fields and varying frequencies and this frequency we collect okay so this is about the gradient magnetic field now we are moving fast uh, slowest we will cover uh, this is the body patient body now we need to select a slice so we are selecting this region We collect this and we give the sync pulse. It's for a transform, we take rectangle pulse. So we are moving in this way. We change the strength of the signal. If we change the gradient, then it will also change the slice thickness. In this way, we can change by using uh, frequency or uh, gradient. Now we are coming to the encoding part. So here, this is uniform magnetic field. So we get uniformly signal is decreasing. When we have gradient magnetic field applied, then signal decreases with particular encoding. So this gives the very varying signal, varying magnetic field causes varying signal. Now, by using different strengths, we encode each line of this frequency. So we are changing this signal strength. Here, this strength we are changing and we are encoding, um, we are collecting the signal for each different image. In this way, we are collecting whole signal. Uh, now, this signal is collected. This signal is full K space. We call K space signal because in the frequency domain, we have this signal. So this one line, line by line, we are collecting the signal and this is signal we are getting. After taking the Fourier transform, we get this whole image. So this, um, this Fourier transform is used to calculate the image. So after Fourier transform, we get this lower one image. If we take the center part of the signal, only center part, outer part is zero, so we get this blurred image. So this is low frequency component, blurred image. And this is only high frequency component and low frequencies are zero. So here edges are there, but it's contrast is not present. So this is uh, different, we can see here. Now, precautions is that, that MRI is uh, uses very high magnetic field. So we need to concern about that, that any metallic objects do not reach to the um, MRI machine. So this is, we have to take. So it's a safety issue. Now it's a conclusion or summary. So here, this is the patient body. Now we have different gradient uh, magnetic fields are applied and we are collecting the signal from the body. So we have different signal frequencies and same different magnitudes. This signal is composite signal we are detecting and this detector signal we get 
we digitize the signal, we take the Fourier transform for the signal and we get the image. So uh, image we are getting this way. This is the image after getting this Fourier transform. So now, uh, any questions do you want to ask? Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Now questions, please. Hello. Uh, yes. Very nice presentation, sir. Uh, and your PPT is uh, is it over or uh, something is remaining, sir? Yeah, it's over. It's uh, only summary. I saw the sort of the presentation. Uh, sort of the diagram. It was it was very nice uh, PPT and uh, lots of uh, information there about uh, how we use. Uh, electronics just uh, mainly Fourier transform in medical and it is so amazing that how uh, you explain that practical scenario of uh, electronics application. So uh, we all uh, uh, benefited by this uh, PPT and uh, I think a student also uh, benefited by this and all uh, participants who are uh, continuously uh, listening you also get benefited if any of you have uh, some question we have two to three minutes so if any student or other if you want to ask some question with with uh, our expert you can uh, raise your hand then i will unmute you and you can uh, uh, directly ask a question with our speaker if you have any query, you can raise your hand. I will unmute you. Uh, sir, uh, till now, uh, I would uh, like to ask you a question. Uh, please uh, guide our uh, participants if uh, they want uh, uh, to do some research on this field, uh, what uh, uh, basics uh, they have to work on that, in basic which where we have to strong. Uh, I uh, I am understanding that you are talking about uh, magnet M MRIs or uh, yeah yeah sir yeah. if okay. a student are uh, want to go in this field so they are uh, in which way they have to focus in this subject of electronics they have to focus uh, for this uh, first uh, it needs to define the problem that uh, because it's a very wide area uh, so area wise you need to define first your area that you need to work on uh, imaging so medical imaging then medical imaging uh, varieties of medical images are there if you want to move for the mris then mri uh, has its own uh, subjects uh, completely uh, MRI. If we, here you see in the uh, USA, uh, radiology department is there. So only and they work on the uh, MRI and CT, X-ray, X-ray, CT and MRI, only on these three. So this is a different uh, department. So for that, you need to work on the uh, our electromagnetic theory and followed by that, uh, you need to go for a specific uh, study of MRIs, how MRI acquisitions, so there are different uh, books, tutorials are available. So from that we can study uh, this particular field and it is uh, interlinked. Uh, we, when we work on the research, so we need to improve all the things. Uh, so uh, uh, Lord, uh, me can say is so many students are um, good in English. So there is no issue with the English, but uh, most of the students that those are not uh, at that level, so they need to work on the English. They need to work on the technology. Technology means they learn the technology, then they should revise it again and again, again and again, so that uh, each and everything gets interlinked. Uh, after that, they need to work on the software programming. For that programming, it also needs revisions. Means if you work at a time, then it's okay, but after some time, it, uh, we do not uh, recall. So it needs a continuous practice. So up uh, for each and everything, it needs practice. Means uh, you need to do daily, daily, each and everything you have to divide. 
uh, some programming you have to do daily, some uh, concepts you need to divide. So you make notes for each and everything. And after getting notes, it uh, gives, uh, um, it helps us to revise it quick, quickly. So this uh, technique uh, helps everyone to revise these concepts daily basis. If you revise the concepts daily basis for a year, so it you get very confident and you become uh, unique in that field. So this is the approach. And thank you, sir. Uh, you uh, can select any field. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have one minute left. So I would like to thank you uh, uh, to you and all participants who were present here. Uh, after that, our online uh, session will end it. Now all the participants ready to present their paper in uh, Sivanand auditoriums. So, uh, because sir was in USA, so this session is uh, conducted in online mode. Remaining all uh, presentation will be on uh, offline mode at the institute. Again, I would like thank you, uh, tell you thank you very much, yes, one sir, for giving us uh, your precious time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, yes, one sir. Okay. Uh... Oh, most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay.